Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to episode 21 of hashtag LNT live from the holy city of Karbala. Now tonight is a very interesting topic. Tonight we're talking about the most essential thing humans need on this planet. Well, one of the essential, you can't say this, but one of the essential things uh, that humans need on this planet. They're also known as human rights, rights for us humans, subhanAllah. We'll get to talk more, but after we see what's trending, come back to you guys in a few moments. Again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, the U.S. unemployment rate fell to 3.7% in September, the lowest it has been ever since December of 1969. Now figures from the Department of Labor also shows uh, that the U.S. economy created 134,000 jobs during this month, fewer than actually expected. Now significant job growth was seen in professional and business services, healthcare and construction. Average hourly earnings rose at an annual 2.8 in September, down from 2.9 in August. Now, a recent report from the Organization of Economic Corporation and Development said, they com said that the compared, uh, they compared uh, the other countries. A large share of the population remain remains at the fingers of the labor market. So we do see that there's a drop of unemployment rate, uh, which happened in the United States. That's it for trending. Let's go jump in to tonight's topic. Welcome back, dear viewers. Uh, thanks, who, uh, thanks uh, for everyone joining us tonight, and we do welcome you once again to episode 21. Now, the rights we have as human beings has been a discussion for many people nowadays and around the world. Now, who gave us the right to do this or that and such questions? And some of the rights are being violated. Even the simplest right to live. If we look at the world right now, we see many people losing their lives for absolutely no reason. Now, on the other hand, there have been many organizations out there who aim to protect you, our rights. Now there are many books written on human rights throughout history. Tonight, we want to focus on the most complete book ever written on human rights. That's why we bring it to, to tonight's question, which is very simple. Tonight we're talking about, or we're asking the question, which book in history includes all human rights? Which book in history includes all human rights? That's your question for tonight. Don't worry, it's not a very hard question. If you think about it, it's very easy actually. Um, all, you, all, you, all you have to uh, do is ask Sheikh Google and uh, let us know right here at plus 964-774-067-1836. Let us know what you think about tonight's question. Let's take a quick break. Come back to you guys very short. Again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, the cameraman did like uh, the comment about Sheikh Google, and it made him specifically. Uh, he liked that, so we're going to call him Sheikh Google from now on. Uh, but as I mentioned, the question for tonight is which book in history includes all human rights? Now, the number to participate at via WhatsApp, so it means it's all free, uh, is at the bottom of the show, plus 964-774-067-1836. You can give us a free call. You can send us a text message or a voice note all via WhatsApp. Now, at the beginning, let's begin by explaining what exactly are human rights. Now, human rights are the rights inherent uh, to all human beings. Whatever our nationality, peace, uh, place of residence, sex, gender, national or ethnic origin, color, religion, language, or any other status as you can see right there. We're all equally entitled 
to our rights, human rights specifically, without discrimination. These rights are all interrelated, interdependent, and invisible. So what this means is that they can never be taken away. Although sometimes they can be restricted if someone's about to break the law, for example, or a threat to national security. Now human rights are basic to humanity. They apply to all people, whether they're living in the East or in the West. Understanding of human rights is an important part of our individual status as human beings. That's why each individual living in a specific country needs to understand which rights apply to him, which we'll get to talk about in a few moments. Now these are the basic rights and freedoms that belong to every single individual. They are the fundamental things that human beings need in order to flourish and participate fully in a society. Now the universal rights often expressed and guaranteed by law in the form of treaties, customary international law, general, princi general principles, and other sources of international laws. Now, international human law, if you were to speak about it, it lays down obligations of governments to act in a certain way or at times refrain certain acts in order to promote the best human and, uh, to, and to protect also uh, human rights in that country uh, and the rights, the fundamentals of freedom of each individual or group. Now, how do human rights help you? How do, how do human rights help us? Now, in one way, human rights are relevant to all of us. Yeah, and sometimes when we think of human rights, we think of those in poverty. We think of those who went in genocide. We think of those who don't have um, the necessities of life when, when we're you know, chilling at home watching Netflix. Even when you're chilling at home watching Netflix, there are human rights that apply to you, which are, number one, your right to express whatever you want to say, express your opinion. Oh, that's sometimes limited as well. We don't want to get into that. Your, your right to education your right to own property, your right to belong to any religion you wish, right to private and family life, and of course at the end, your right to not be mistreated, wrong, uh, wrongly punished uh, by the state. These are the most fundamental rights that every single human being should have. And sometimes people don't have it, we'll get to find out why. Now, where do human rights come from? A lot of people have asked this question. Human rights, are they divine? Are they made up by another human being, maybe in a government uh, that needs to serve its own agenda? We don't know. We'll get to find out. Now, there are many books written on human rights. However, tonight, we want to focus on the main books that are written on human rights, the, the, the most notable ones. Now, if we were to go to, to, to the first most famous document on human rights, we would go to the first book ever written in 1215, the Magna Carta, also known as the Great Charter. Now, this Magna Carta, the Great Charter, as you can see right there, full screen it please, as you can see in it right there, it inspired people across the world from Thomas Jefferson to Mahatma Gandhi, uh, but why was this charter originally created? And what does it actually say? If you can read that, then you're genius. Uh, but for me, I can't really read that. But what does it actually say? What does it indicate? Now, if we were just to go back in the medieval England time, you know, in the year 1215, when this Magna Carta was first initiated or established, and the rule of King John, or King John I, as a lot of people believe. Now, Many people believe that King John was one of the most, or was the worst, not one of the most, the worst king in history. He imprisoned his former wife. He starved his opponents to death. He allegedly murdered his own nephew and pulled the beards of the Irish chiefs. Now, he did not only just do that, but he imposed heavy taxes on his barons in order to pay for his expensive wars. And whoever was refused 
they would either be punished or the property was taken away. Now, at that time, the barons demanded that King John obeyed the law. When refused, they captured London and eventually King John was forced to you know, sit down and negotiate. Now what happened there, they brought clause, they brought statements in declaring the rights of each individual. That's when we see the most powerful uh, symbol uh, of liberty around the world. As, as we can see right there, King John uh, negotiating and writing down uh, the Magna Carta. Now, the m first most famous or the most famous clause, which is still part of our human rights today, is to give uh, all free men the right to justice and fair trial. And it states, and I quote, No man shall be arrested or imprisoned except by the judgments of their equals and by the law of the land. To no one will we sell, to no one will we deny or delay right to justice. Now that's from the Magna Carta. Ford, you know, if we, if we were to fast forward 733 years and you would have the next big human rights, the United Declaration of Human Rights, the Universal, the United, Universal Declaration, Declaration of Human Rights, as you can see right there. This is what was established uh, by the United Nations back in 1948. Now, this was motivated by the experiences of the preceding wars that happened earlier. It, it made every single uh, country sign a petition or sign this declaration that there will no longer be any invasions in a country and so on and so forth. And, you know, it's, it's a comprehensive statement of uh, inalienable human rights. Now, it declares, what does it declare? That human rights are universal. No one is exceptional when it comes to human rights. Everyone gets fair human rights. Now, what, see, it, it's, the, the book says it clearly, but nowadays we see something coming in between where some are getting fully, uh, where they're getting their rights fully, and some not even getting the basics, uh, necessities of human rights. That means that they need to be enjoyable and enjoyed by every single person living on this planet. Now, the Universal Declaration, Declaration indicates civil rights, political rights, rights of life, free speech and privacy. It also includes economic, social and cultural life, like the rights uh, to social security, health and education. Now it begins with a preamble using of, preamble using of the word whereas, you know, as, as, a, as a basis uh, of default for agreed public reasons to proceed with the adoption of its articles. Now, this word was repeated numerously and was repeated seven times, um, citing reasons ranging uh, from recognition of human dignity and equal rights uh, as a basis, freedom, and justice. Now, these two books, the Magna Carta and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they both stated the most essential points of human rights. Now, we want to find out the book that has unfortunately not been written down in the books of history like it should be, just like these books, and not has been taken into consideration uh, by the United Nations or um, you know, the, the, the higher people out there. But before we talk about this all-in-one uh, human uh, rights book, let's take a very quick break and come back to you guys very short. Welcome everyone joining us tonight. Uh, we do remind everyone, inshallah, to call in and let us know what you think about tonight's question. The question uh, is right at the bottom, as you can see right there. Which book in history includes all human rights? Uh, the phones, inshallah, are blowing up, but we'll get, a, we'll get through uh, some, inshallah. But um, the number to call in 
is plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six and let us know what you think about tonight's question which book in history inclo includes all human rights now before we get into that book we just talked about the Magna Carta for those who just don't tuned in we just talked about the Magna Carta and the Universal uh, Decla Declaration uh, of Human Rights now we need to introduce this book we need to bring some information as to show which book or what is it uh, and, and who does it belong to now within a social system established uh, by the seal of prophecy, by the seal of prophethood, is a full set of rights for humankind. Now, according to the humanitarian principles mentioned within the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty states, and we have certainly honored the children of Adam and carried them on the, on the land and sea and provided for them of the good things and preferred them over much of what we have created with definite preference. This is mentioned in chapter 17, verse 70. And if you're thinking, what I'm about to say is that the Quran is uh, the book that mentions all human rights, yes, but at the same time, it's not what we're trying to conclude. Let me finish and then you'll get to know which answer is the best. Now the infallible Imams completed the mission of applying every human right possible um, and, and this integrated model of human rights system and have defended it with their lives now here comes the important uh, here comes the importance of the role uh, of a personality uh, we speak uh, we spoke about just a few days ago who is that individual two days ago on Thursday we talked about the sixth infallible and fourth, Imam, Imam uh, Ali Sajjad, peace and blessings be upon him. And as we mentioned in that, he had major achievements, two of which are um, the Psalms of Ahl al-Bayt. And the second one is uh, Sahih al -Zajadi. and the second one is the Sa'at al huquq the Treaties of Rights. Now, this is actually very interesting. Because as I mentioned earlier, up to right now, there is no specific government and actually no one in general um, has you know, given any credibility to this book. Although half or most of what is mentioned in the Magna Carta